As a small child, Mary Lou Goley loved castles. Her father, Boyce Goley, would spend time with her building sandcastles on the beaches of the Pacific Northwest and consoling her when the tide would inevitably come in and wash them away. It was through Daddy's vivid stories that I first acquired the love of castles. I thought of nothing but castles, from the dawn to the end of my nightly prayers, when I'd say, and God, don't forget I want a castle. Not one that belongs to some prince, but one of my very own. I don't want to share it with anybody. Boyce was Mary Lou's king, and she was his princess. Then, on Christmas Day, 1927, their fairy tale ended. That night, Boyce Gully vanished. Over the course of the next 15 years, letters would occasionally arrive, but the only answer they would give to Mary Lou's millions of questions was that her father Boyce was now living in Phoenix, Arizona. For the many long, lonely years, he was a myth, but a breathing one, who dwelled under our same sky. It was our comfort to know that somewhere he was there. Finally, as her 18th birthday came and went, Mary Lou prepared to make the journey to Phoenix to finally reunite with her father. Then, the telegram came. Boyce died today. Stop. No need for you to come. Only a few days later, Boyce's final letter, written to Mary Lou, arrived. For the first time in nearly two decades, Mary Lou received answers to questions that had plagued her for years. Dearest Mary Lou, can you forgive me? I left home not because I wanted freedom, but because I had tuberculosis. Can I ask more of you than to understand? All I have to leave you are some rather hazy memories and a house. It is a house with a heart and needs patience and understanding. Daddy Boyce, P.S. I love you. After making the trip to Phoenix with her mother, Mary Lou discovered that the house her father had left her was far more than just a house. In fact, it was a castle that he had built himself out of stone, mortar, and seemingly any supplies he could find. Along with the castle, Boyce left Mary Lou his will, which brought with it another twist of its own. I thought all wills were the same, but there was nothing regular about Daddy Boyce's will. From the way he had scribbled it with an indelible pencil to the sealed letter he had addressed to me. Dearest Mary Lou, please do not think the following request is an unfair one. It is just a precaution taken for your own welfare. I want you to love the desert as much as I do but not through a sense of duty. It takes several years for a dude to catch desert fever. That is why I'm asking you to remain in Arizona for at least two years. This will be a trial period. The end of that period will be on New Year's Day, 1948. That is when I want you, Mary Lou, to open the trap door on the floor of the lower halls of the castle. If at that time you still dislike the desert, then sell the castle and go back home. With all my blessings, Boyce. After deciding to stay, Mary Lou made the castle her home. Finally, after two years of waiting, it was time for her to open the door and unearth the final mystery of her castle. On the morning of January 1st, 1948, with her family around her, Mary Lou used a chisel to break open the old rusted lock and open the heavy trap door in the floor. Inside, a manila envelope, and scrawled on the outside was Mary Lou's name. I flicked open the seal with icy fingers. Then the whirring began inside me as I unfolded the letter. My dear little Alice in Westerland, I hope you have learned to love your castle as much as I prayed you would. My love for you is carved on the foundation of the castle. You see, I hadn't forgotten my promise to you. Now you have your own castle. I never forgot, not even for a minute. Lift up your eyes to the skies and be happy. We will all be together again. Daddy Boyce. Love. 
It was Boyce Gully's love for his daughter that held together every stone of the castle, every brick a tribute to his princess, his sweet Mary Lou. My father was no longer a mystery man, but just a beloved father with courage and an inordinate love of rocks. <laughs>